Hi everyone, welcome back to this series on Emmy Broker tutorials and also trading systems as well. This particular video is going to be on a, a gap trading system. Um, gaps have been used for decades, if not centuries, by people who are looking for basically a jump up in price. And um, and yeah, so it's very simple to do in Emmy Broker as well. And and also, it's a really neat way to get the results of that particular method of trading very very quickly. In fact, once we've coded it into Emmy Broker, we can literally get the results within seconds. So this is what we're looking for. That's what that is is a gap just between the lowest low of the bar and the highest high of the previous bar. And um, and if there's a gap between those two values, then that's what uh, that's basically what we're looking for. Just to to give ourselves a bit more of a grounding in this trading system as well, we want it to be if it's moving up, we want it to be above its 50-day moving average, and if it's moving down, then we want it to be below its 100-day moving average. This one here, and there's another gap as well. <laughs> Great. So as you can see, it does happen. It won't work every time but it may work enough to give us a profit and that's what we're after. So to start our co uh, to start coding our trading system, we go to analysis and formula editor really quickly. This opens up our blank canvas um, for us to cast our trading paintbrush over. And Emmy Broker has a function called gap up and also gap down. And as you can see, when we type in those two things, it actually turns blue. That means Emmy Broker recognizes it and it wants us to open up a bracket. Now, when we do open up the bracket, it actually it, it tells us what it expects and it's not actually expecting anything, which is just lovely. <laughs> so we can close the bracket very easily. Now, when it does gap up, what I want to see as well is for the closing price to be greater than the opening price and we'll just close that off with a semicolon. Now, it's the opposite for a gap down. Actually, forgot our AND. And as you can see, with the AND and with the C and with the O, it recognizes that because it turns bold and it actually formats it for us as well. So, I've typed in AND there, it formats it and it, uh, it goes bold. That means that it recognizes that command. We want the close to be less than the open for our gap down as well. So, next all we have to do is just turn these into arrays by, we can call it anything we want really, I'm going to call it gap D, and if we say equals, that one there, um, then every time it sees gap D, it will return our gap down, and I forgot the brackets there, there we go, and the close less than the open. So we can do the same for our gap up, we can go gap U, equals and every time it sees gap u then it will um, return gap up and the close greater than the open. So we'll really quickly set up our two moving averages as well. The first one, what did we say? It was a close closing price of the last 50 days and the second one was a closing price of the last 100 days. So the 50 days will be moving up and then the uh, the 100 days will, will be moving down. We can call it moving av1 equals and moving av2 equals the 100 day there as well. So, I mean, after that, all we have to do is set up our position sizing and additionally, we can set up an index filter as well. Um, I might just quickly set those up. I've looked at those in another video, so I mean, if you want to get more detail on setting position sizing and um, and an index filter as well, then just check out those other videos. But once we have set the position sizing, um, it's basically 5% in each position and a maximum of 20 positions at one time. And, um, and the index filter would be if it was over the 150 day moving average of your chosen index. Um, in Australia, it's the All Ordinaries, for example. Um, in America, it might be the S&P 500. In Europe, it might be the FTSE. It's really up to you. Um, and you know, you, whatever you have the data for, you can use it. So, so that's probably the best thing as well. Setting up our buy and sell signal. So what do we want? We want it to be, a, for the buy, to be a close greater than or equal to um, our 50-day moving average, and what was our 50-day moving average? We set it up as moving av1. So now we can just use that array 
and um, and that will save us a little bit of time as well. We also want and gap u. Oh. Gap u and close it off with a semicolon. Um, and that's our gap u up here. So that was the close uh, the close greater than the open and a gap up as well. Um, for the cell, we want it to be a close less than or equal to our moving average 2, which is this one here, the 100 day moving average, or gap down, which we called gap D, and that's our gap down there. Every time it sees gap D, it will return gap down and close, great, uh, cl close less than the open as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, just one last thing guys, what you can do as well is to get rid of any additional signals, um, you can use the xrem function. Um, I haven't gone over this like individually, but basically what it does is if I say xrem by and cell, it just asks for two arrays there. What that means is it will return the first value, the first instance of by, but then it won't return another by signal until there's a cell signal. And we can do the same for the cell signals. It will return the first cell signal, but it won't return another cell signal until there's a buy signal. So that's a really cool thing that you can do as well. And if we just say that buy equals that and sell equals that, that will give us addition to our regular buy signal. So we'll have our regular buy signal, but then it won't give us any additional buy signals until a sell signal is made as well. So we'll just quickly save this as well. We'll call it the leap of faith trading system. There it is there. And that way all of our beautiful code can be implemented and we can actually see, uh, you can go to either new analysis here or old automatic analysis and um, just pick your trading system, the leap of faith trading system. and if you've got a watch list that you want to test it over, um, I use the top 200 on the ASX, um, on the Australian charts, which is what I personally trade. So again, you could use the, the S&P 500 list, the FTSE list, um, whatever it is that you choose. Um, now from, we can back test it over the last 13 years. That's just a very easy way to do it. You could back test it over any time frame you wanted. Um, that should give us a pretty good idea of whether it may be successful or not. And then once we've got that, all we have to do is click backtest. <laughs> and as you can see, within literally two seconds, it gives us the information um, or it, it's, it's backtested those 200 stocks over the last 13 years. Um, if we were to do this manually, guys, it would take us weeks and weeks and weeks, if not months, um, if we ever got it done at all, to be honest. So this is so great, just such a great way to do it. If we click report here, then it will give us our our stats. And that's that's the best part. So as you can see, it's got an annual average return of 28% per annum, um, which is pretty good. Um, the win percentage is 38%, so that's not amazing. Um, and if we just, ha let's have a look at the equity curve because that's a good way to do it, good way to check. Um, it earns $50,000. So it starts with $50,000, goes at the end, it's $1.4 million, so that's pretty good. The drawdowns, as you can see, the nastiest drawdown was in 2008 um, or early 2009. So yes, that's 40% is really too big of a drawdown for most people, um, including myself. So what we could do is just add in that index filter to try and smooth out that equity curve a little bit. Um, so let's have a look and see what happens when we do that. If we just edit, and if we say and in our buy in our buy signal, if we want our index to be greater than or equal to our index moving average, um, so that's the moving average of the last 150 days on your chosen index, or at least that's the one that I've used for this particular example. So if we back test that, that will give us different results. And here we go. So using an index filter, as you can see, the average annual return goes down. So 24% instead of 
However, the maximum drawdown is not 40% now, it's only 23%. So that's much, 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 much better because it means that even if you had your worst drawdown here, um, your average annual return is 24%. So your annual return is greater than your average drawdown, which is really great. I mean, that's a good thing. That's what you want to have in a trading system. As you can see that we don't have any of those nasty dips. In fact, the, the trading system just goes flat for quite a long period of time during that downward market. So that's just, that's awesome. That's really good as well. And as you can see, the equity curve is much smoother. It's um, it's not lumpy and jumpy uh, and, you know, it doesn't bump all over the place. Um, what we've got is it sort of smooths out and then, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a smoother ride, which is what we want. Um, here's our drawdown. The worst drawdown was uh, just over 20%. So that's fairly respectable as well. And as you can see, the yearly returns, we're looking at, what, 11%, 28%, 42%, 129%, 33%, 55%, 30%, negative 3, then 18, then negative 1. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it does go all over the shop, but, you know, so does the market as well. There's our long tail. Not as many, um, not as many really big wins there, but it does have the big wins, and then it has, you know, obviously more of the, the larger winners than the um, than the losers there as well. So yeah, I guess that's just a way of looking at your trading system. I love looking at the equity curve because that gives us a good representation of the drawdowns. And it's a very simple trading system that anyone can program. So I hope that has helped in some small way. As you can see, here are a few examples of the trades. Um, but I hope that has helped in some small way. What a great trade, that one. Isn't that beautiful? And, um, you know, if it has, shoot me an email at the site. It's asxmarketwatch.com. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other trading systems there that are freely available to anyone just to, just to sort of get your own ideas or create your own trading system as well from those ideas. And, um, yeah, just really trying to help out as many people as I possibly can. Guys, have a great week. Have a great month. Have a great year. And hopefully we'll meet again soon. Bye for now.